Hi, my name is Bill and uh, with me is Callie. We're both volunteers with the Toronto Feral Cat TNR Coalition. That's a big mouthful, but basically what we do is we try to make life a little more comfortable for street cats. Uh, we trap them, we neuter them, and uh, we return them to their, their natural habitat. Uh, at the same time, we provide them with shelters and we make sure that they have all the necessary medical vaccinations, etc. And what we'd like to teach you today is how to actually make one of these if you have a feral cat in your backyard and uh, you can save its life by doing this uh, because in the cold winters in Toronto it gets really horrible and uh, these little guys go in these shelters and... Uh, Stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> Stay warm and dry. Uh, we get tote bins from Canadian Tire or Home Depot or any yep. big box store. What we do is we use a circular saw to cut a hole in the side, one side of the bin and that into that hole we fit a tunnel like so and Kelly will demonstrate how we're going to do this. Uh, this tunnel is made of pl corrugated plastic. It's uh, made by a company called Armtech in Guelph, Ontario and uh, that material as well can be bought at uh, Home, Home Depot or other building supply uh, organizations. Uh, we also use a product here called uh, Durafoam. It's uh, styrofoam with a foil backing to it. And the, the beauty of the foil backing is that it reflects the body heat back onto the animal and uh, enhances the, uh, the warmth inside the shelter. Uh, we also use uh, straw, which we get from farms or we get from uh, stores after Halloween. They always have surplus straw kicking around. We use that. The um, tools that we use in making these shelters are simple household tools. We use the, your exacto, large exacto cutter knife, uh, marker pens, uh, T-square, and, uh, and a tape measure to measure up the, the Durafoam to cut it. It comes, by the way, in four by eight sheets. So make sure you've got a vehicle <laughs> that'll take them when you go to the store to get them. Um, we also use two different kinds of tapes. This is the, uh, the standard duct tape, which we use to tape up the inside of the, of the shelter. And this is the Gorilla Tape, which we use on the outside. It's a, a stronger and more uh, weather-resistant tape. Uh, the first step in our process is to take the uh, tote bin and cut a 7-inch hole in the side of it. Um, this is for the entrance tunnel for the cats. And a little tip for that is you take a hair dryer, heat up the tote, be very careful with your kids with the X-Acto knife and uh, make sure nobody gets hurt. Second step in the process is to measure and to mark up and cut the Durafoam. And the purpose of this is to build a box inside the bin and this box just gives further insulation for the cat. And, and uh, I should mention that the Durafoam that we're using uh, reflects the body heat back onto the animals so that uh, it just gives them extra warmth in a cold winter day. So then we assemble the pieces. We put the bottom and the sub-bottom in first. And uh, next go the two side pieces and then the two end pieces. Boxes taped together with duct tape and uh, Kelly will do that for us. Little tip here is you want to make sure that it's airtight so that no drafts come in because we're trying to create a little container for the cats that's really warm. Step number six is inserting the tunnel and you might notice that we have taped the edges of the uh, tunnel. This is just a protect, uh, provide a little more protection and comfort for the cats that will be using it to enter their shelter. Okay, and a little tip with this one is you want to make sure that when you insert it, it goes to a fat edge. So you have ridges and troughs and you want it on a ridge, not on a trough. So when you insert it, make sure it's a really snug fit. Once we have our tunnel in the, uh, in the shelter, we take the tape and tape it into place so that it's uh, solidly in place. And a nice tip for uh, getting that to work well is you put slits in your Gorilla Tape and as you can see it goes smoothly around. So they're about halfway down, about an inch apart. 
It's very important to remember that uh, when you tape the tunnel into place that you also tape the inside so that it makes it a very solid uh, connection and it uh, makes it easier to, for the cats to go in or out of the shelter. Step number seven is uh, filling our shelter now with uh, straw. And I should mention, and I don't have to mention it to country people, but city folk might want to note that straw and hay are two different things. This is straw because it's dry. Hay is a, is a wet food for animals. And what you want to do is fill your shelter about three quarters full with straw. And the reason being is the cats bed down in there, they make a little nest and it's really cozy for them. Our final step in the process is to add a tip sheet. And this is just a tip of a, a list of tips for people who are going to be using these shelters for their feral cats. That goes into the box. We add the lid with the uh, foil side down and put on our lid. You may notice that the lid has a, uh, a notice on it. Um, it explains that it's a colony caretaker's uh, shelter and uh, it's basically telling strangers that that's what it is and don't touch it because you know could somebody could mistake this for a garbage bin or something like that. So there we have it. In eight easy steps we've built ourselves a, a shelter and that'll keep some lucky cat warm and dry this winter. This is a project that you can do in your own home with your family and it's something that you can do to make a contribution to the feral cats in your community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.